We want to take you over to, uh, let's go to Joshua chapter two, Joshua uh, chapter two, Joshua chapter two. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter two, we're going to read from verse one. We're going to take it slowly today and want to break this down for you. All right. Uh, we won't break this down. So uh, that's it with the names. That's it with the names. Now, everybody going to want to put in, well, I want to write my, I want to write these friends' name. I want to write this one's name. I want to write this one's name. That's it. That's it. See, sometimes why you got to, you got to move quickly. Cause see, sometimes we, we don't move quickly because we, you know, we, we thinking too much about this, that, what somebody going to stop worrying about who knows you want here. All right. So follow along today. We in Joshua chapter two, Joshua chapter two. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of Joshua chapter two. And it says, then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Acacia Grove or Shittim. It really come from the place of Shittim. He instructed them, scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. Uh, let me stop right there for now. Uh, last week, it was basically what you're thinking, and God wants us to be successful. So today, I want to talk about where you're headed. Where are you headed? And um, give you some guidelines to how to succeed and how to be successful. Some things that I, you, you need to be thinking about, all right? And so here, and, and we did Joshua chapter one, we was on Joshua chapter one for about a couple of weeks uh, where, where uh, God uh, came down and, and told Joshua, Moses is dead, get up, get up. Grieve, you gotta grieve some things, uh, you gotta let it go and then get up and move, all right? And, and then last week we talked about even being uh, successful. You need to, what you need to be thinking about and that what happens to us in the middle is our thinking messes us up, our thinking. And so today I want to give you some concrete things of, of what you need to be, to be thinking about. So here it is now, Joshua now, because God had told them, Joshua, take these people and cross over the Jordan River in chapter one. Now in chapter two, Joshua says, he sends out two spies. He says, go spy out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. I need you to go and spy this land out. Now, if you remember, 40 years ago, I got to give you some history because I need you, I want you to get this. 40 years ago, when Moses was alive, God told Moses in Numbers chapter 13, Moses, I want you to get 12, 12 folks from the, the tribes. Pick out one man from each of the tribes and spy out the land that I want to give to them. So now 40 years later, years later, here comes Joshua now. And Joshua says, send out two spies. First thing I want you to get you got to have a sense of direction. Somebody write that. Sense of direction. You got to know, where am I going? Where am I headed? Where do I want to be? Where is God taking me? It says, scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. We need to have a sense of direction. You ever be with someone in a car, you riding with someone, and, and you know some people that don't have a good sense of direction, they get you lost in a minute. <laughs> you know, you, you know, it's like, you know, I need to go someplace usually, I, I, and that's one good thing, I thank God for this. I can go someplace usually once, maybe twice, and, and I, I can usually get back again. I got a pretty good sense of direction. I can, you know, remember, okay, I remember landmarks, I remember things, you know, but you ever be with someone who doesn't have a good sense of direction? <laughs> they get you lost in a heartbeat. 
All right. You look, so folks, we need to pray, Lord, I need a sense of direction. I need to know where I'm headed, where I'm going, God. And so God said, he basically is like, look, I need you to get to the other side. There's an other side. There's an other side of this pandemic. There's an other side of this coronavirus. So I want us to get to the other side of the Jordan River, especially, uh, uh, Joshua tells these spies, especially around Jericho. So go spy out this land. We need to have a sense of direction so, so that we've got to basically, we, 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 we're on a mission, all right? You got to know, where am I headed? What's my mission in life? Where am I going? Because if you have no aim, you don't get there. Come on, somebody. If you don't have an aim, if you don't know where you're headed, if you're just wandering through life, where are you headed? Where are you going? Some of you just, you know, it's just like getting in the car. I just need to get out. I'm just driving. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just driving. God says, no, no. I want you to have a sense of direction. I want you to have a, I want you to know that I have a place where I want you to end up. And I need you to, to, to see that place before you even get there. Y'all hear me today? Sense of direction. Sense of direction is key. Sense of direction is talking about having clear cut goals of, of, of what you're trying to attain, where you're trying to head. What are my goals in life? Here it is, Joshua says, scout out the land. That means go to the land and bring me back a report. I need us so that we know what's there, what's going on there, what, what, what's happening, who's living there. Well, I, I need to know what's, what's around in that area. Bring me back a report. I, so I can have a sense of direction, I need some clear cut goals. Let me ask you today, what are your goals? Do you have a sense of direction? Do you know where you are headed? Come on, somebody. You know where you're headed? Because I'm telling you something. It's frustrating being with people, at least for me, who don't know where they're going. Isn't it frustrating? You ever be with somebody in the car? And, and you're driving, and it's like, okay, well, which way should I go? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? And then you tell, and then, you, and then you know, and then if you're some, with someone who's stubborn, well, pull over to the gas station. Ask for directions. I don't need to pull over. I know where I'm going. Well, we didn't get there. Well, if you say you know where we're going, how come when I ask you where we're going, you say, well, I don't know. I'm lost. Get some direction. Are you hearing me today, folks? Get some direction. If you got to meet with a, 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 a coach, a mentor, get some direction. It is key, folks, to know where you are going. I don't, I, I, I don't want to be out here just wandering. It wastes gas, it wastes time. It just, it, 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 it just, you just, you just like wandering. You just wandering. For years, the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness because God was giving them a sense of direction, but they didn't want to follow the directions they were given. Oh, glory to God. I, I hope this is getting across to you today. You need a sense of direction. Lord, where am I headed? Lord, where do you want me to go? Where are you sending me to, God? So Joshua says, spy out this land. And, and in this sense of direction, I want you to learn something too from this sense of direction. I, I want you to, to understand something. In this sense of direction, you, you got to develop new ways to think about old problems, old situations. You get that? You gotta develop new ways to think about old situations. What you mean, Pastor? 40 years ago, 
Moses sent out 12 spies. Joshua says, 40 years later, I was one of the spies that went out. 10 came back with a bad report. Two of us came back with a good report. I've learned. Ooh, come on, somebody. I've learned through the years some experiences. So I've learned now I'm only sending out two. I'm not sending out 12. What have you learned over the years? Ah, come on, somebody. What have you learned? See, Joshua learned something. So he says, you know what? I'm going to develop a new way to think about an old situation. This situation that happened to us. When we sent out 12 spies, <laughs> 10 of them came back with, 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 with a... With, with a um, uh, a bad report that affected thousands and the two of us that were saying, no, we can do it. This is where God is sending us. This is what God is saying we ought to do. No, I'm not. No, this, I've got to develop a new strategy. I've got to develop a new way of thinking, a new way of looking at this. What have I learned? I've learned that it's not always good to consult 10 people and 12 people. Sometimes I've got to just consult in the multitude of counselors. Doesn't mean I talk to 50 people. In the multitude of counselors is, let me talk to two people. Oh, come on, somebody. And, and who's going to give me some honest, honest feedback and give me some ways to think about it. But I've learned, I've learned some things over the years. What have you learned? Oh, glory to God. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you got to learn some things. What have you learned from your experiences? What have you learned from your environment? What have you learned? What have you learned? What have you learned from your experiences? What have you learned from your environment? What have you learned? That also helps in determining where you're going and how you're going to get there. If you don't stop to, to reflect during this time of why you're in, in, in this virus and why we're home during this pandemic, what have I learned? Good and bad, what have I learned? What have I learned from my mistakes? What have I learned from my success? What have I learned? Ah, glory to God. I'm not going to do some things the same way I did it. I, I'm telling you, I've been pastoring now for 20-something years. I, I, I've learned some things in this 20-something years. Uh, I, and I, I don't want to do some of the same things. I've made some bad mistakes. I did some good things. What have I learned? If I sit down and to write what I have learned over 20-something years of pastoring, there's some things I would do the same. There's some things I would be like, no, I'm not going to do those same things again. I've learned from experience. I've learned from, from um, my environment. I've learned some some things, some things I learned the hard way, but I learned some things. And it's helped me to develop a, a, a sense of direction. It's helped me now that I can be here, that in the midst of this corona, I, okay, yes, in the midst of not knowing when we're going back into our building, I've learned some things, okay. I've learned, okay, how to get people around me, set people up around me, okay, so we can chart a course and do some things. I've learned some things to give me a sense of direction. Oh, glory to God today. What have you learned, people of God? What have you learned, those of you that are listening and watching, watching? What have you learned? That's a question I want you to ask yourself. What have we learned as a family? What have we learned? Your family's been through some stuff. What have we learned through the trials? What have we learned because of the trauma? What did you learn? Sometimes we don't like asking that question. Because people think, oh, you just want to get rid of old ways. No, it's not. No, because some of the, it's not saying old ways are good ways, bad ways. No. But what did I learn from it? Joshua learned. I'm not sending out 12 spies. I'm sending out just two. I learned something from what I watched my predecessor do and go through. Ooh. What have you learned from watching other people and their mistakes? And not just, it, it might not even been their mistakes, but what did you learn? 
Oh my God. It's not just learning from your own life, but what do you learn from other people that you see? Oh, Joshua learned from Moses. It wasn't a bad thing that he sent out 12 spies. It wasn't bad, but he realized something <laughs> that, that all it takes is, is, is the majority, the big majority of 10 people to come back and say, we can't do this. We can't get over there. But God promised us this. God, God wants us to get there. And two, no, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Takes just the 10 of them. Turn the whole nation to say, nope, we're not going. Joshua learned. Sense of direction, folks. This is all sense of direction. What are you learning? What are you learning? Come on, somebody. I need you to hear me today. I need y'all to hear this word today. I don't need to, I don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. See, because I, I got to learn to, to look at, because there's been some messages that have been ingrained in us, okay, that is hard to change. You've learned some things from, from your family, from childhood. That's not necessarily, it's not necessarily good, but it's been ingrained in you. You need to sit down and look at, what have I learned? Because what you have learned is also been determining how you've charted some ways. What you have learned has also, some of you have said basically, hear, hear this. What, what you have learned, some of you have said, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to raise my kids this way. I'm not, some of you have learned, I don't want to get married because of what I've seen, because of what I learned, what I went through. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. So you need to be honest. What have I learned? Ooh, good and bad. What has helped shape my sense of direction? Somebody hearing me this, this morning? What have you learned? So if you grew up in a, in, in a home where, where um, marriage was just, ugh, you know, your parents were fighting all the time and, 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 and they were angry and, and it might have been physical abuse and, and emotional abuse. You might say, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with marriage. I don't want nothing to do. Why? Because you learned something. And that is determining your course of direction. <laughs> Ooh, what have you learned? We've learned something from our families. Learn, we, we learn, oh, I, I don't, we, don't, we don't talk about family business outside. I don't, you know, I keep my emotions to myself. We learn some things. It's not necessarily saying it's good, but it, it, it affects our sense of direction. It affects where we're heading. What have you learned? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. What have you learned? Some of us have learned some things that, you know what? Oh, that's why I wanted you to say about uh, my family will succeed and be successful because some of us grew up with seeing, wow, my family never achieved. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm coming down somebody's lane now. My, my family never made it over. We always had a, and if I look back on it, we always had a slave man, negative, slave, uh, pessimistic mentality. And you picked it up, did without even realizing, and you learned something from it. Oh, I, I, without even saying it yourself, you learned, you know what? I'm just really never going to achieve. I'm never going to be getting, get anywhere anyway. So I know, you know, I don't know why I really put that much effort. I'm not really going to try. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, you've learned some things. Sense of direction, number one. We've got to have a sense of direction, and it includes all this. We have to have some clear-cut goals. Got to know where, 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 Lord, where we're heading. Asking the Lord, Lord, where we're heading, where we're going. Scout it out. Look into it. We also got to learn and ask ourselves, what have we learned? And develop new ways to think about old situations and old problems and old habits and how can I develop a new way to think about this? All right, y'all get that? 
So here it is now. If I were to ask you, before I move on to my next point, write it in the, the chat down here. Come on, write one thing that you've learned. Come on, what have you learned over the years? What have you learned? Come on, what have you learned? Somebody wrote, never overcome poverty. I hope that's, that pride can kill you slowly. Oh, that's a good one. What have you learned? Come on, somebody. What have you learned? What have you learned? What have you learned? Come on, write some things. What, what have you learned? I want to hear from you. Come on, come on, come on. What have you learned? What have you learned? Whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent. What have you learned? Even when, especially when I feel clueless, I'm doing pretty great at life. Come on, somebody. Oh, that's good. Being patient and trusting in the Lord. I've learned that good family secrets cause damage. Oh, Jesus. My God, I've learned that my past won't dictate where I'm going. This is good. This is good. I already wrote, okay, somebody, Ari, everything happens for a reason. Come on now. Come on now. What have you learned? What have you learned? You've learned some things. Try not to jump to conclusions. Oh my goodness. That's my next, that's, that, that leads into my next thing. Not j just to hear, but to be a very good listener. Yes, be careful when you speak. Come on, somebody. What have you learned? What have you learned? People are watching you when you don't realize it. Oh, that's good. Yes. I learned how to be a leader. Come on, somebody. Comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, this is good. To keep going no matter what has happened. Pass the prayer. Don't tell secrets. Ooh, that's a good one. Your mind is your strongest muscle. Yes. Come on, somebody. Can't tell everyone everything. Learn to accept help. Come on, say that one. Let me say that again. Learn to accept help. Let me say it again. Learn to accept help. Waiting on the Lord is always worth it. I learned how to speak up. Come on, somebody. You've learned some things. We've all learned. Somebody even wrote here, uh, learn how to forgive. Woo, yeah. My anger, lack of patience can ruin my future. Oh my God, this is good. Learn to forgive. Learn to write it down, makes it real. Yes, listen to learn, listen more than you speak. Learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, come on. Learning that boundaries are important. Yes, come on, somebody. You've learned some things. Oh, everyone has a story. We learned it. Even in all of the bad, God is there. Learn to be still. I've learned to be the best me. What have you learned? What have you learned? Let me, let me hurry. Let me hurry up and get on to my next point here. Learn that faith without works is dead. I've learned that this is not about me. Come on, somebody. You getting it. You getting it. Look at here. I love Joshua chapter two. I'm not going to have time to dissect it all today. But I need to, I want to keep going. So the two men that Joshua sent out says, so the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. Look where they went, to the house of a prostitute. Woo. <laughs> but someone told the king of Jericho, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab, bring out the men who have come into your house for they have come here to spy out the land. Isn't that interesting? Like, like number one, how did these men that Joshua sent out, they went, they set out and they came to the house of a prostitute. Why would they go to the prostitute's house? Oh, let's just be real here today. <laughs> Why would they go to the prostitute's house? Let's just be real. The prostitute, ah, uh, she knows people. She knows things. <laughs> the prostitute, okay? Let, 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 let's be real here. Because the prostitute got different folks coming in and out. All right? The flow of traffic coming through the prostitute's house. All right? But the prostitute also knows how to hide folks. Let's keep going. And, and then look at someone told the king of Jericho, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king didn't say, just said they come to spy out the land. Well, how did they know where the men were? I want you to think. I want you to think. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab. 
what's the king doing talking to a prostitute? <laughs> said, the king said all this to, to Rahab, the prostitute. Bring out the men who have come into your house, for they have come here to spy out the whole land. Look at verse four. Rahab had hidden the two men. She knew how to hide these men. She knew how to hide folks. God sometimes will use unlikely people to bring you to your destiny. <laughs> Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute. Rahab hid in the two men, but she replied, yes, the men were here earlier, but I didn't know where they were from. They left the town at dusk as the gates were about to close. I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. See, she the prostitute. She know how to talk the talk. She know what game to play. <laughs> Actually, look at what happened. Verse six. Actually, she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath the bundles of flax she had laid out. This is all, this is all sense of direction, where you're headed. And that in this sense of direction, God might bring you among some people that you would not have picked out on your own. Woo -hoo -hoo! Come on, somebody. <laughs> they stopped at the prostitute's house. Most of us would have been like, oh! Oh my God, <laughs> what the men of God doing at that prostitute's house? <laughs> Lord have mercy. They stopped at the prostitute's house for the night. Most of us would have assumed certain things because we didn't know really what was going on. So she hides them. Verse six says, actually she had taken those men, those two men, the spies, taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath bundles of flax that she had laid out. She was used to hiding folks. So the king's men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossings of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king's men had left, the gate of Jericho was shut. Verse eight, before the spies went to sleep that night, Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them. Come on, somebody. She had conversation with the spies that Joshua sent out. And let's look at verse number nine, because this is the key to my next point. I know the Lord has given you this land. This is the prostitute talking, folks. She told them, we are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. Verse 11, no wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. My second point in here is where you're headed. Uh, you gotta have a sense of direction. Number two, you got to have self-awareness. You got to have self-awareness. Whew. You've got to be aware of who you are and you must be aware of the God that you serve. Hear me. You've got to be aware of who you are and aware of the God that you serve. It took a prostitute to say to these two spies, she had a conversation. It took someone Sometimes God will use somebody who, who see, now Rahab the, 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 in, in this land of Jericho, they weren't praying to uh, Jehovah. They weren't praying to Jehovah Jireh. 
They're praying to their own gods. All right? And so, uh, so here it is. It took this prostitute to say to them, look, the Lord your God, the supreme God of the heavens and the earth, we know who you are. Do you know who you are? Look, folks, you, you got to have a sense of who you are. Isn't it something that people can see more in you than you can see in yourself? People see more uh, good in you than you see in you. You got to know who you are. And, and let, 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 let me, I need to break this down. So I, I need to, because she says to them, we're all afraid of you. All right, we're all afraid of you. We know God's given you this land. There's a prostitute talking. Not serving God, <laughs> at least their God. But we, 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 know, we know who you are. See, let me, get, let me get this across to you. The enemy is aware of who you are. The enemy's aware. And what our issue is, we don't know who we are. It took someone else to tell these folks, this is who you are. To tell uh, uh, Joshua's men, the children of Israel, this is who we are. This is how we see you. Now, let me, let me show you something. 40 years ago, if you go to Numbers 13, Numbers 13, let me, let me show you this. Numbers 13 and verse number 33. Numbers 13 and verse 33. 40 years ago. The 12 spies went out, right? Went to the land. They said, look, there's giants in this land, all right? Verse, number step to 13. They come back and they say, um, in verse number 31, I'm in numbers 13, 31. But the other men who explored the land with him disagree. These are the 10 spies that came back. The, the 12 spies come back, 10 that say, we can't go up, say, we can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are, the giants. So they spread a bad report in the land. Verse 33, and they say there, we even saw giants there. And next to them, we felt like grasshoppers and that's what they thought too. Get that. We, this is how we saw ourselves. 40 years ago, same children of Israel going to the same land, says, we, they're giants there. We feel like grasshoppers. We're nothing. This is how we see ourselves. This is how we are aware of ourselves. And that's how they see us. Did, did you hear me? This is how we see ourselves, and that's how they see us. 40 years later, Joshua chapter 2, here comes Rahab the prostitute, and she says to them, uh-uh, baby, uh-uh, uh-uh. We know the Lord's giving you this land. We are afraid of you. 40 years ago, they had the wrong self-awareness. They weren't aware of themselves because of their slave mentality. They had the wrong perception. And it killed them. It destroyed them. You can have the wrong perception of who you are. And it can either be to your detriment or to your greatest asset. But you got to know who you are. My God. There's nothing wrong with saying, yeah, there are giants in the land. Yeah, that's the real thing. There were giants in the land. Yes, we are smaller than them. It's okay. See, being self-aware means I recognize my weakness. But being self-aware means I also recognize my strengths. Somebody hearing me this morning? You got to recognize my, your weakness and your strength. Many of us can, man, if, if, if I were to say to you today, tell me your weakness, man, you can list 50 things that you bad at, 50 things that you can't do, 50 things you're not good at, 
I can tell you what I'm not good at. <laughs> That's easy. I, I can tell you, oh, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. I, I can't, you know, oh, I don't do this well. I don't do that well. Da, 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 da. That's good. It's good for you to know that. You need to know, okay, where you are weaker in, where, where, where other people excel more than you. You need to know your weak areas. You need to know. But I want to give you the other thing that you need to know from, Josh, from Joshua chapter two. You need to know your strengths. You need to be aware of who you are. Come on somebody today, come on somebody. Are you hearing me today? Look at what she's saying here. Cause, cause see, our hearts melt in fear because of you all. What, you, you, you melt in fear? Because of us? <laughs> yeah. L -l Let me ask you this. You need to ask this if you're going to be self-aware. All right? Self-awareness. You need to ask. Now hear me. When you show up in the room, when you arrive on the scene, because these two spies arrived into the place. Because don't, don't forget, the king of Jericho heard that these spies, the children of Israel, had sent out spies. All right? He says, some Israelites have come here to spy out this land. Wasn't a whole army. He was scared because of two people. Because of why? Their reputation. All right, God's reputation rather, because of who they were. When you show up in a room, you need to be aware of your presence in the room. When you show up, what happens? Y'all hear me? What are people, what are people aware what, what are they aware about you? Let me, let me try and get that across a little bit better. I recognize something about when I show up in certain, in certain venues, in certain rooms, okay? I recognize I, I'm a pastor. Uh, I recognize I'm a community leader. Um, uh, and and I, I can go some places even when I'm not in... You know, I remember going to being in the hairdresser one day. You're going to get back there someday. Okay, don't rush it. Don't rush it. But you're going to get to the hairdresser again. All right, you can get to the barbershop again. So I remember being in the, in the hairdresser. And I remember somebody, lady coming over. Aren't you that pastor? <laughs> it was like, you know, sometimes, you know, you want to be incognito like these two spies. They want nobody to know who they were. They're spies. <laughs> Trying to just blend in. I was just trying to blend in, go get my hair done, be quiet, have some peace and quiet to myself. I wasn't coming in there. They don't even call me by my, my name, so people won't have to know I'm a pastor, so I can have some peace and quiet in the hairdresser. And then I hear, trying to do all this, trying to be secretive, trying to be hiding, trying to hide under, nobody know who I am. Aren't you that pastor? Aren't you? Aren't you, aren't you pastor? On that ch church on Columbia Street? Anybody, anybody identify what, what I'm talking about? And so I was like, whoa, yeah, uh, so I, I couldn't hide no more. Uh, yeah, yes, 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 ma'am. That, that is, that's, that's, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, you know, I try to, sometimes I try to act like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's that, but like, yes, yes, ma'am, that's who I am. One time it was like, oh, right there in the address, right in the salon. Well, can you pray for me? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm off duty. I just come get my hair done. <laughs> People know who you are. They know the God that you serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Look, can you pray for me? Because I need an answer. I need a solution. I 
I need your God. That's what that's what Rahab is saying. Look here, the God that you serve, the God is He's above the heavens and above the earth, the earth below. That God, that God, that God, that God that you serve is supreme. We ain't fighting against you. We ain't fighting against your God. We know who you are. Do you know who you are? My God, my God. See, see, people used to say that uh, it was pride to say who you are. No, it's not. Jesus said to the disciples, remember, Jesus asked the disciples in Matthew 16, who do people say that I am? Who you, who people say I am? Well, some say you're the prophet. Some say you're this, some say that. No, no. Who do you say I am? Ask somebody. I want you to do this over the next couple of weeks, over the next week or so. Ask somebody, who do you think I am? <laughs> some of you are afraid to ask. <laughs> ask somebody now. Who do you think I am? Who am I? Ask somebody. You need to be self-aware, folks. You need to be aware of who you are. You need to be aware of, of your presence in the room. You need to be aware of the God that you serve. You need to be aware. I hope this is getting across to you. When you show up, what do people think when you show up? Rahab tells them, this is what people think. When you all showed up here, people are scared. People, man, we're already talking about you guys. I remember when, when, when uh, we have our back to school festivals and every year we got to go sit and, and present to city, to city folks. And we've got to get their permission to do our, 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 to get a permit. Okay, you think we just go and they just give us, no, it's a big ordeal. And they would ask us, and I remember I used to go the first few years, I used to go with, the, I used to go, and then I passed that on. <laughs> I used to go, I, see, I'm like Joshua, and I send, out, I send out the spies. Before I used to go, I was one of them. And they would ask us, they would say, Rev, okay, you, you got a rain date. And before I could speak, somebody in the room, I'll never forget it, spoke up and says, they don't need no rain date. They got connections. They got connections with, they see higher power. They, you know, they won't say God. They got a connection. They don't need no rain date. And that became the thing. These people don't need no rain date because people are coming. We've gone every year, man. And even when it threatened to rain, it, even if it stopped, even if it rained in that morning, they, these people, they don't need no rain. Because, see, see, they believed in something. They saw something in us that we didn't see in ourselves. Oh, come on, somebody. You, we got to have self-awareness, people. We got to be aware of who we are and the God that we serve because other people are watching us. Other people are aware of the God that you serve, of the God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly, the God that's able to, to raise the dead. People are aware of it and you're not aware of it. And so when you walk into a room, they expect you to talk a certain way. They expect you to act a certain way. They expected me to say, uh, no, we don't need a rain date. So if I said to them, uh, yeah, this is our rain day, I would have had a people be like, hmm? what you need rain? What? You've never asked for no rain date before. You don't need no rain day. What? You have a connection. You all have a connection. Come, come on. And they would just make, they, they were making jokes, but they were real about it. They were serious about it. You need something done. You need something to happen. Go to these folks. We don't know how they do it because every year, for 20 years, for 19 years, it never rained on our parade. It never, we never had to cancel our back to school. Come on, somebody. We forget who we are. We don't recognize who we are. Who are you today? You got to know who you are. Stop trying to shy away from it. God says, I've made you that way. I, I was preaching this in Jeremiah chapter one this week. This blessed my spirit so I spent all me. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, before you was in your mother's womb, I formed you, I formed you. I'm the one who formed you. I'm the one who knew you. So you didn't just show up on the earth just accidentally, just because you were inconvenient. You're no inconvenience. You might have seemed like you were inconvenience to your parents, but God says you were not an inconvenience to me because I'm the one who formed you and I knew you. 
So I need you to know, Jeremiah, I need you to know whoever's watching me today, listening to me today. I need you to know who you are. I need you to know it's key to where you're headed. It's key to where you're going. God will use some unlikely people to speak to us and say, this, that, that's who you all are. You are powerful. You are mighty. God would always send an angel sometimes. God would send it. He sent an angel to Gideon. Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Who, me? You calling me a mighty man of valor? Yes, you are a mighty man of valor. Jesus. An angel showed up to Mary. Mary, you're blessed and highly favored of God. Me? Yes, you. Oh. Who are you today? God sent an angel to us. Rahab in some ways was an angel in disguise because she showed, she came and said, look, this is who you people are. You bring fear in us. We know the God that you serve. Y'all are some powerful. Y'all are some bad people. I don't mean bad in the bastards, but you all got it together. You all got it going. You, us? You, <laughs> and then what we do, we like, no, we're not us. We got all this. Heat. And then what we do, we get, people say, oh yeah, y'all got it together. Y'all got all this going on. I used to get that from pastors. I used to get that from community folks. Pastor Ray, how you do this? You must have a church of 500,000 people. How you do this back to school every year? You got all these people out here. And at first I'd be like, 500? Ain't got no 500. And God says, stop saying that. Just say, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we just learned how to bring it together. We just do this. We just do that. We just do this. Because you got to know who you are. Self-awareness is key, folks. I'm over my time today, but you, we got to be self-aware. We got to know who we are, your weaknesses and your strengths. If I were to ask you today, right now, write down for me one of your strengths, just one. Write it down in the chat. Come on, somebody, write down your strengths right now. Come on, write one. Don't write 20. Don't write 20. I didn't say 20. Just write one of your strengths. Creativity. Come on. Come on, somebody. Write one of your strengths. What are you good at? What are you known for? What is one of your strengths? Singing. Come on. What else? What's the strength? Connecting with youth. Come on. Come on. Write it down. Come on. What's the strength? We need to know what we're good at. I call what God sees out in people. Okay. What's one of your strengths? Come on. Come on. That's good. Writing. I call what God sees out in people. Good. Helping the youth. Good. Come on. What's one of your strengths? Come on. Encouraging others. Come on. Listening. Words of encouragement. Leader. What's one of your strengths? Making it happen. Come on. What's one of your strengths? Y'all, y'all riding too slow. Y'all riding too slow here. Are y'all there? My memory. Ooh, that's a good one. I've never heard somebody say my memory. It's a strength. That's awesome. Giving advice. Come on, somebody. I, uh, I like to talk to new people. Come on. Come on, somebody keeping people fed, connecting with people, caring, serving people. Come on, what's one of your strengths? Helping others. Analysis of many kinds. Good, teaching, helping, strengthening visions, bringing them to fruition. Oh, this is awesome. People, I'm a people person. Good, endurance, leadership. What's one of your strengths? I know y'all can tell me your weaknesses, but tell me your strengths. Tell me your strengths. Loyalty, encouraging others. And you need to know your strengths. You need to be self-aware. I need you to ask somebody. Playing the drums. Good. Understanding different perspectives. Giving advice. What's one of your strengths? What's one of your strengths? Speaking life. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Understanding. I said this different perspectives. Giving advice. What is one of your strengths? You got to be aware. It's a danger to not to be aware of yourself. Being kind to the people. It's a danger, folks. And what has messed us up? I talked about last week. Our thinking. This is also what's messed us up. Not being aware of who we are. Drawing people to me, being kind to people, caring for people. Come on, somebody. Loyalty, being optimistic, being on time. Ooh, being on time. <laughs> I love that one. What's one of your strengths? Leadership. Come on, somebody. Nurturing. You need to know. Serving. 
active listening. I love this. I love it. Trustworthy. Well, this is good. Loving heart. You need to know what's one of my strengths. Strong in the faith. I need you this week. This is your next assignment. First assignment was what have you learned? What have you learned? Where are you headed? The next assignment is I want you to begin to ask, who am I? I don't want you asking 20 different people. <laughs> ask one or two. Who you, who, 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 you say, who you say I am? Don't just tell them list all your negativity. <laughs> but who am I? You, you'll be, you would be surprised at what people say. Some of you list these as your strengths. See if other people see that in you. Mm, my God. Do people see the same thing that you see? 40 years later, it took a prostitute to tell the children of Israel. Let, let me go to the very last verse of Joshua chapter 2. When, when, the, when the spies returned, look at what happened. When the spies returned, and, and verse number uh, uh, 23, it says the two spies came down from the hill country, crossed the Jordan River, and reported to Joshua. Verse 24, it says, look at the Lord has given us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us. Where'd they get that from? Rahab, one person. We, we went to the person that knew something, that could tell us some things. <laughs> and she, she gave us the rundown. She gave us the scoop. This is how we're seen. This is who we are. People are terrified of us. People believe God's given us this land. People already believe it. They're, 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 they're just waiting. They're waiting. That's why they're, 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 they're waiting for us to come. They're waiting for us because they know the God that we serve. They believe in the God that we serve sometimes better than we believe in the God that we serve. They know who we are. You remember from Black Panther and his mama stood up and said, tell them who you are. People of God, we got to rise up and tell them who you are. Stop being afraid to tell people who you are. Woo. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Tell them who you are. Tell them who you are. <laughs> who are you today? I need you to be self-aware. Let me hurry up and finish up this word. Let me hurry and finish. Verse 12, she says, Now swear to me by the Lord that you'll be kind to me and my family since I've helped you. Give me some guarantee. That when Jericho is conquered, look at this, verse 13. This woman is prophesying. God used a prostitute to prophesy. <laughs> when Jericho is conquered, verse 13, I'm in Joshua 2, 13. She says, give me some guarantee. When Jericho, when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and my mother, my brothers and my sisters and all their families. Because when Jericho is conquered, she prophesied to them, we offer our own lives. And the men said, we offer our own lives as a guarantee for your safety. The men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord gives us the land. Then since Rahab's house was built into the town wall, her house was built into the wall. And those of you who've been to Jerusalem and, and, and know about the walls and everything, she let them down by a rope through the window. She told them, escape to the hill country. Hide there for three days from the men that are searching for you. Then when they have returned, you can go on your way. Before they left, the men told her, we will be bound by the oath we have taken only if you follow these instructions. When we come into the land, you must leave this scarlet rope hanging from the window through which you let us down. Because, and all your family members, your father, your mother, your brothers and all your relatives must be here inside the house. They must be in lockdown with you inside the house, inside the house. Somebody get that? Inside the house. Verse 19, because if they go out into the street and are killed, it's not going to be our fault. <laughs> but if anyone lays a hand on people inside this house, inside the prostitute's house, inside Rahab's house, we will accept the responsibility for their death. Ooh. 
So let down, verse 18, it says, when we come into the land, leave your scarlet rope, it's a red rope, leave your scarlet rope hanging from the window through which you let us down. Because that scarlet rope is going to be the sign so verse 21, let me pick it up. I accept your turn, she replied. And she sent them on the way, leaving the scarlet rope hanging from the window. She left it there, hanging, because she never knew when they were going to return. My third point, my final point for today. We need a sense of direction. We need to be a sense, have a sense of self-awareness. My third point, you got to hang a scarlet rope. Moving big, where you headed? Hang a scarlet rope. Let me break that down for you. Maybe some of you are like, scarlet rope, Pastor, what you talking about here? A scarlet rope. I gave you the scenario. They told him, hang this rope. It's a red rope. Hang it. Let it hang outside of your window so we know where to find you. This scarlet rope represents from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Josh, Jesus' name in the Old Testament is Joshua. All right, y'all getting this? Jesus' name in the Old Testament means Joshua. God is salvation. All right? Where you are headed, you could always keep the scarlet rope hanging out your window. The scarlet rope is a red rope, signifies the blood of Jesus Christ, the cross. All right? It's the cross of the Lord the cross, the blood of Jesus, you got to always keep that hanging out, which signifies the grace that God, see, see, this, this is coming to Rahab, the prostitute, says that we'll preserve you. So when we come back in here, when we see that scarlet rope, we know that's your house, Rahab. No matter what people say about you, we know that's your house and we're going to save you. Because what you did for us. Scarlet rope signifies the grace, the mercy of God, that you are who you are and where you are because of God's grace and mercy. And that you should never, ever forget God's covenant of love and grace that God says, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to protect you. Woo! Hang out your scarlet. Hang out. See, it's not just about wearing some cross around your neck. No, I need the cross within my heart. I need the blood of Jesus within my heart. That I, his grace and his mercy brought me through. His grace and his mercy. So Rahab now, if, if you study Rahab, I'm going to tell you something about Rahab. It, can I show you something? Let, let me show you this. Hebrews. Uh, let me show you this really quickly. Let me show you this. Hebrews chapter uh, 11. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me show you this. Hebrews chapter 11. I don't plan to go so deep, but I, I got to show you this. And uh, Holy Ghost, chapter 11, verse 31, Hebrews 11. This is the faith chapter. This is the, 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 the heroes of faith. What it's talking about, see, it, it's talking about Abraham and, and Moses in Hebrews chapter 11. These people were people of faith. In verse 31 of Hebrew chapter 11, it says, it was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Rahab the prostitute is listed amongst Gideon, Samson. David, Samuel, and all the prophets, Rahab, the prostitute, why? Because she put out that scarlet rope to say, remember me, don't forget me. Don't forget what I've done for you. Don't forget, let the cross of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus, let grace and mercy and truth come in front of me, not my reputation, not my reputation of what I've done, but let grace and mercy be what guides. Rahab, she's not only in, in Hebrews chapter 11, but, but Rahab the prostitute is listed in the genealogy of Jesus. See, you don't get to Jesus unless there's a Rahab. 
<laughs> what you mean, Pastor? Matthew chapter one. The whole genealogy, the things that we say, and who beget who, and who beget who, but who beget who. Verse number five says, Solomon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was who? Rahab. Who's Rahab? The prostitute. Boaz was the father of Obed, and they go on and go on and go on and go on and go on, all the way down to Joseph, all the way down to Mary. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary gave birth. So saying what? There were, there's a prostitute in the genealogy of Jesus. But saying what? When I put out my scarlet rope, when I hang that out, all right, in, in my thinking, I can never forget what God has done for me. That if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, if it wasn't for who Jesus said I was, if it wasn't for his blood redeeming me on the cross, that I can never look down on anybody or anyone because of the scarlet rope that I'm going to hang out of my window to say, ha, I've been redeemed. This house has been redeemed. This house, Jesus has put a mark on. The Lord has covered this house. The Lord has said, my family, stay under this blood. Stay under this house because God has covered me. I might have come from a sordid past. I might have come from some things that I'm not proud of doing. Some things that I wish was not in my DNA. Things that I wish I never did. But I put out my scarlet rope and I say, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for watching over me. I'm never going to get too proud. I'm never going to get too proud because I know I'm going to keep that scarlet rope out there because it's going to keep me from being prideful. It's going to keep me from thinking I'm better than somebody else. It's going to keep me from by me putting up my nose to somebody and says, oh, I, I can't talk to them. I can't touch that. No, because of the scarlet rope, that I hang out my window. It says, no, I'm not better than anybody else because there, but for the blood of Jesus and for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ goes me. But I thank God for his grace and his mercy. Come on, somebody. You hear me today? Hang out your scarlet rope and, and think back to what God has done for you. Think back to what the blood of Jesus has saved you from. That you'll never forget. Now, I got my rope out. I, I put my rope out my window. I'm hanging out. I'll never forget where the Lord brought me from. Never forget what God delivered me from. Never forget God delivering me. me, me. I, when I look back over my life, Jesus. Look back at some shy little kid who was afraid of their own shadow. And look at me now on the platforms where God has put me. I need that scarlet rope out that window. God, because it was your mercy, because you remembered. You said, no, no, no. I needed to go down to, to my seed, to my, to my next generation. Lord, that same remembrance, God, that's been on my family line with your blood and your mercy has protected and kept us. I needed to pass on down. Joshua's men says, look, as long as we come back here, when we conquer this city, like you, you said it to us, when we come back and we see that rope hanging out, we will save your family as long as they're in the house. But if they're in the streets, we have no obligation, but they got to be under the blood. Let me ask you a question, ma'am. I've asked you some questions because it's how we grow to the questions. What has God delivered you from? What has God's grace and God's mercy delivered you from? What is it that you never can forget that God has done for you? That you like, wow, God remembered me. God didn't forget me. Come on, come on. That God didn't forget you. God remembered you. See, when you see that, when you see that rope, it's a sign that 
God didn't forget me. I need to finish this. I'm a little longer today than usual. God did not forget you. Do you all hear me? I'm speaking to somebody today. You listening to me and you hear me. Let me say this to you. I'm looking you dead in your eyes. God has not forgotten you. Jesus. God has not. Just, just hang out that rope. Just put, put, a, put, put up a hand and say, and Lord says, I've not forgotten you. I see your hand where you are right now. <laughs> God says, I didn't forget you. Put out that scarlet rope. I didn't forget you. I see you. I'm not going to forget your family. I'm not going to forget you. Holy Ghost. God didn't forget me. Hallelujah. God remembered me. God's not forgotten you. God didn't. But Lord, I messed up. I've done some things. But you put out that, you hung out that scarlet rope and God says, oh, I see the rope. I see it. I see it. I'm not going to forget you. I'm not going to forget you. I'm not going to forget you. God has not forgotten me. I want to declare that to somebody today. God has not forgotten you. God's not forgotten for some of you for your labor of love. God's not forgotten you. God has not forgotten. I want you to think about it. Lord, what do I need to remember about what you've done for me? Where you delivered me from? Come on, somebody. Let's end with this. What has God delivered you from? Come on, be honest today. What's God delivered you from? I'm, I'm done today. What's God delivered you? Because this is all about where you're headed. You got no toxic relationship. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Come on, somebody. Be real. What's God delivered you from? <laughs> write it down. Write it down. What's God delivered you from? Only one person has been delivered today? My temper. Oh, hallelujah. Sleeping around. Come on, somebody. Come on. Be real. Be real. Be real. This is good. Bad relationships. Oh, I love it. I love it. Come on. Come on, rejection. Ah, glory to God. Come on, somebody. What has God delivered you from? What has God delivered you from? Don't worry about it, people. People see my name. Don't worry. Making the same mistakes over and over. Oh, I love that. Making the same mistakes. I've been living from the hand of death too many times. Come on, somebody. Oh, Jesus. What has God delivered you from? You've delivered you from yourself. Your, 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 my God is delivering me. I say constantly delivering me from old ways of thinking. Come on, somebody. What is God delivering you from? Bad relations, friendships, rage, oh man, anger, bitterness, resentment. Come on, that's it. Anger and fighting. Oh, Jesus. Hopelessness. Ah, come on, somebody. Ooh, rejection. My God. Lies being spoken over me. Yes, come on. Illness and sickness. Desiring sex before marriage. Come on, Jesus. Toxic relationships. Engineering school. Revenge. What has God delivered you from? <laughs> Negative mindset, my temper. This is good. Come on, grief. That's why. That's why you got to hang that that scarlet rope over there, cause God has delivered you. And God, I can never forget where you brought me from. Self rejection, self criticism, guilt. Come on, anger, bitterness. Ah, glory to God. What has God delivered you from? Homosexuality, my anger, self doubt, frustration. What has God delivered you from? Depression, so much. What has God delivered you from? Myself, hands of the enemy, thinking I'll be poor. Oh, Jesus. Alcoholism, come on, somebody. Pride, depression, bad soul ties. Come on, suicide, come on, somebody. What has God delivered you from? That's why you need to hang over that, that, that scarlet rope. Depression, self criticism, failure. Mental abuse, Woo, Jesus, suicide. God has delivered us. And God says, don't you, don't you forget, don't you forget. You better hang that over. You better hang that scarlet rope over to say, to never forget what I've delivered you from, that my grace and my mercy, that it's because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh, perfection. 
Oh my God. That one, people need, we all, the bonds of perfectionism, being bound by perfectionism. Come on, still working on me. Self-criticism, sexual abuse, perfectionism. Come on, somebody, see somebody else with depression, medical scare. What has God delivered you from? You ought to give God a praise. Thank you, God. I'm going to hang out my scarlet robe to never forget, God, what you've done for me, God. I never want to forget, God, where you brought me from, God. And that, God, that you will always remember me, God. That you will always, always remember me, God. Remember my family God in the name of Jesus God has delivered us from homelessness homelessness oh my God negative self-esteem relationships come on somebody fear and bondage I'm just taking time to say these right now because I want you to hear how people have been delivered it might not whatever you've been delivered from God has been delivered from fear sin and death whatever God has delivered what has God delivered you from you got to declare it today what has God delivered you from there's no time to judge somebody. What has God delivered you from? Put out that scarlet rope. That way you, and I'm looking at nobody. Whatever you say, hey, fear, depression, anxiety, negative thinking, friendship, broken heart. What has God delivered you from? You still standing today. You still alive today. Because why? His grace and his mercy has delivered you from resentment, from anger, from addictions. What has God delivered you from? All types of abuse. What has God delivered you from? So this way, and next time you you talking to somebody, you working with somebody. That scarlet rope, that scarlet rope, emotional, emotional abuse, negativity. Come on, somebody. Breast cancer. Oh, Jesus. Anger, abuse. My God. Myself. Come on, somebody. What God says, I'm taking that I've delivered you from that scarlet rope to never forget. I'm going to use that story. I'm going to use it to deliver others. <laughs> I'm going to use what I've delivered you from to help deliver others. Your negative thinking, I'm going to use that to help deliver others. Your emotional abuse, I'm going to use the, you, what you went through to help deliver others. Your fear of loss, your family pain, I'm going to use that to help you to deliver others. That's why you got to be self-aware, but that's why you got to hang out that, self, that, that scarlet rope because Lord, I thank you. Daddy issues. We being real today. I love this. Daddy issues, mommy issues, family issues. God delivering you. Jesus. Y'all get this word today? Where are you headed? Where are you headed? Because if you don't know what you've been delivered from and that God has remembered you, God has not forgotten you. That can, that can stand in your way. My God, I'm seeing all these daddy issues. The third, that, fourth, that, the tenth, that. <laughs> I love my people. Because we're being real. We need God. We need to put out that rope. That rope signifies for us in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus. That is power to deliver us that we don't have to stay stuck. We don't have to stay bound. That God would remember us. Let me pray for you today. Let me pray. Thank you for being a part of this word today. We pray that it's blessed you. We pray that you receive something from it. I want you to go back. I want you to ask yourself, what have I learned? I want you to ask yourself, you know, um, find out, uh, what, what do people uh, say about who you are? Who are you? Uh, know who you are. I want, I want you to know who, who are you? Who are you? So ask some people this week. I want you also to, to put out that scarlet rope and, and declare, and, you know, what is God delivering me from? What is God still delivering me from? And uh, so that I can remember others and help to deliver others his grace and his mercy and his truth. <sighs> because it is so true. It's like somebody, I just see somebody wrote, when you're going through, you forget what you've overcome. That's why you need that scarlet rope. That scarlet rope is always, you have that hanging out, that of what God has delivered me from, what I've overcome. 
what God has brought me out of. You need to have the scarlet rope. Always, always. That should, and it's not just a one-time thing I put out my rope. No, she kept it out there because she never knew when they were going to come back. So you don't, because you never know. So I keep my rope hanging to know this is, this is how God is remembering me. God, it, is, it signifies two things. I'll never forget what God has delivered me from, what God has brought me through, and that God, don't you forget me. <laughs> I'm still here, Lord. Hallelujah. It signifies remember me and I won't forget. <laughs> you get that? Remember me and I won't forget. Remember me and I won't forget. Remember me, Lord, but I won't forget how you brought me through. Could have lost my mind, could be dead, but God, you brought me over. You set me free. Remember me, Lord, because I'm, Lord, I'm, I'm going through something right now, God. I, help me to overcome, but Lord, when I, I still got the rope out because I remember how you brought me through that. Oh God, I know you bring me through this. Scarlet rope. All right. Father, right now, thank you for your people. I thank you for everybody who's watching, who's listening to this word today. And I pray even right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for what you have delivered us from. But I know, Lord God, that to get to where we need to go, we still need you to remember us, God. That we're going to keep out our scarlet rope, God. We need to know who we are. We need to be self-aware, God, to have a sense of self-awareness and a sense of direction, God. What we have learned, God. And God, even to develop some new ways to think about some old stuff that, that, has, that, that, that happened to us, God. How are we going to deal with some new stuff? How are we going to deal with it in a a new way. And so, Lord, I pray even right now, God, for everybody who's watching, who's listening to this word, I pray, God, that first of all, God, that if we need you in our lives, that, God, we will commit our lives to you. We just say, Lord Jesus, uh, forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again and, and, I'll, I, and, and, and to come into my life and to be the Lord of my life. And Jesus, we just pray that even right now for anybody who's watching this. And Lord, we just thank you, God. And I bless the people that are watching, listening to this uh, and, and, and just lift up, lift us up, God, in the midst of everything, God, we're moving beyond to where we're headed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you today. God bless you. Uh, even right now, I thank you for being on this call today. I thank you. Um, I thank you. I pray that you were blessed by this word um, and that you receive something from this word today and that you will actually put it into practice and that you will also begin to declare God wants us to be successful, God, that you declare that over your family, declare that also pray that over Kingdom Empowerment Center, whatever church you go to, if you go to a church and you're watching this, uh, that you pray that, uh, that God wants us to be successful. All right. Uh, so I thank you for being a part of this today. I thank you also. And I want you to pray. We want you to, especially, uh, to sow into this word, sow into, um, Kingdom Empowerment Center. Uh, we know we're doing it by faith today. We are still going, we're still going strong. And so, uh, uh, we, we, we need, uh, you to, uh, keep your giving, to keep giving. We realize and recognize folks are going through, but we need to still uh, keep going. And uh, so we need you to pray. We need you as a family, individual, to pray uh, about uh, what you want to sow into uh, the kingdom of God here at Kingdom Empowerment Center. Uh, if you're a part of the house, you know we believe in uh, tithes and offerings, so we ask you to keep your giving up. And we thank you in advance for your faithful giving. And those of you that might be watching and you want to sow, they're going to put on right now uh, ways to give. Uh, they're going to put it on the screen and show you how you can give. Uh, you download the Give Plus app, text to give, uh, the way, uh, the number, the website, kecmass.org backslash donate, PayPal donations at kecmass.org. You can even mail a check. Uh, somebody checks the mail. Uh, Kingdom Empowerment Center, 211 Columbia Street, Cambridge, Mass, 02139. And I thank you in advance, but I want you to pray. Seek the Lord. Lord, I want to give into uh, Kingdom Empowerment Center. I want to sow into uh, this ministry. Because uh, we still work and we still doing some things. Uh, and so we want you to, to uh, be a part 
participant in that. And even now they're going to uh, do our announcements. And get ready, hallelujah. The announcements for May 24th are as follows. Tuesday morning, there'll be 6 a.m. prayer on the conference line, 605-475-4800, access code 666-307-POUND. On Wednesday, there'll be noonday prayer at 12 p.m. on Zoom, and then 8 p.m. Bible study. On Thursday, there'll be noonday prayer on Zoom, Sunday, May 31st, Pentecost Sunday at 11 a.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live, we will have a special guest speaker, Apostle Michael Dalton of Palm Springs, California. KEC will be making grants between $100 and $500 to assist anyone in need during this time. Only one grant will be allowed per applicant and the grants will be considered based on your area of need. We encourage you to submit your application as soon as possible as grants will be distributed on a first come first serve basis until all of the funds are depleted. Please complete the required short form, which is available on the KECmass.org website or by requesting a copy at info at KECmass.org. Submit your completed form to info at kecmass.org. We have masks available for adults and children. If you would like one, please email us at info at kecmass.org. It's graduation season. In light of what is happening, we really want to celebrate all of the KEC graduates. If your child is graduating this year, please let us know. We would like to honor all graduates from eighth grade, high school, college, post-grad, or trade school. Send an email to Deacon Cheryl at cmaynard at kecmass.org with the full name of your child, where they are graduating from, the name of their new school that they will be attending, and also please attach a picture no later than Sunday, June 7th. If you have any questions, you can also direct those to Deacon Cheryl at cmaynard at kecmass.org. Thank you. All righty, thank you. Pray that you've heard all those announcements, you've taken them in, especially want to stress the announcement about we're giving grants from $100 to $500. Uh, we've been awarded a grant. Um, we've been awarded a grant. And so we want to bless people. We want to um, help people. So please um, don't let your pride rob you. Um, and uh, so if you need some help, you're going through some times, um, please download. You can go to the website um, and check that out uh, today. Um, I want to also give an announcement about uh, give a sense of direction. We talk about sense of direction, where we're headed as uh, in regards to the opening of our building, uh, Kingman Parliament Center. Um, as many of you might be aware that our governor uh, stated this week on Monday, uh, uh, a phase reopening of buildings, of businesses, et cetera, and houses of worship was in the first phase that houses of worship are been given permission um, to open up. And uh, I've also have been in conversation with um, Cambridge's uh, local city and public health officials. Uh, we've been in conversation for the last couple of weeks. We're gonna be meeting again uh, through media again this week. And so with the current restrictions by the state and the city, and I've also been in conversations and talking with our executive board of Kingdom Empowerment Center. Um, so in light of all of that and in uh, light of all the, the restrictions that the state and the city, uh, KEC will not be reopening the building as of yet. Okay, let me state that again. We will not be reopening our building yet. We are still having church. So people say, well, when are you going to have church? We have in church. <laughs> um, we have in church on the web. On online, I know it's different. 
um, but we are still having church. And at Kingdom Empowerment Center, you know that we love to sing. Uh, we love fellowshipping with one another. We love hugging. We love, uh, you know, doing all that, fist bumps and high fives and, and, and all of that. Uh, but uh, with the current safety guidelines, which require houses of worship uh, to restrict the number of people um, that can gather together at one time, uh, which also require, what, require us to have people wear face masks while they're inside of the building, that um, we must adhere to social distancing upon entering the building, um, even, even upon while we're in during our service times and also social distancing uh, requirements to leave the building that we just can't allow you to leave. We've got to file out. And then the res uh, restrictions of regarding no fellowshipping at all, even after service. So with all of that, we have decided that uh, it's not good for us so that we can give you a high quality worship and fellowship experience that we will not be meeting in the building right now. We know we miss coming together as well because we value worship, we value it, we value fellowship, but we feel that it is wise and prudent not to come together because number one, we value your safety is our highest priority your safety um, and we want you to be safe and so at this time we feel that it would not be safe to gather together collectively in the building all right um, and so we're asking you um, so we're going to ask some things of you number one pray for us as your leaders i need wisdom this is what we got you reading proverbs pray for us for wisdom for discernment during this time. Um, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs, wisdom is the principal thing. And in all thy getting, get understanding. So we need wisdom, practical wisdom, as well as discernment, God's spiritual discernment to discern, Lord, what should we be doing? We need practical wisdom to know what, what, what's the data, what's the scientific data. Um, what's our state and local officials saying? Okay, that's wisdom as well to hear what they're saying, what they need us to do so that we can keep people safe. And also praying the discernment from the Holy Spirit, all right, of Lord, what should we be doing? Give us the wisdom and the discernment, God, the understanding. So we ask that you pray for us. Um, we need your prayer. So please pray for us as your leadership. Uh, to lead the people well. The second thing, we want you to stay connected with Kingdom Empowerment Center, all right? How we want you to do that. We want you to stay connected, and we, we charged you a few weeks ago um, to feed your mind through the word. We're reading Proverbs. We're reading a, a Proverbs a day. Feed your mind with the word. Feed your mind also with worship, all right, discuss even, you know, uh, uh, and being what you're grateful for with your family, not just with yourself, but somebody else. What are you grateful for this week? What are you grateful for today? Um, and, you know, when you're reading Proverbs, discuss the Proverbs. Wow, this, you know, that, that one hit me really good. Send it to somebody. You know, I thought about that. What do you think about that? Okay, connect with somebody. Then wellness. We told you uh, we want you to be well. So do something physically uh, you know, uh, enhance your mind, read something. But I want to add to that wellness. Uh, there's something in the local governments, in the police department, you can call up and say, can you do a wellness check on somebody for me, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, do a wellness check. We want you to do a wellness check on your KEC people because we're all in this together. That's how we're going to stay connected. Do a wellness check. So at least once a week, every other week, either text somebody, call somebody, you know, we still remember how the phone works, you know, send somebody a card, um, text somebody, just say, thinking of you, checking in on you, how you doing? We're all in it together. It's not just up to the pastors or the deacons to do this. No, it's up to everybody because we in this together. Don't be like, oh, well, they didn't check on me. No, we need somebody to check on us. Okay. So let's check on each other. Let's do a wellness check. Okay. Check on somebody. You thought of somebody came to your mind um, 
you know, whether or not, so we try to either, you know, also we have the, 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 the Wednesdays, we connect the Tuesday mornings, our prayer time, the Wednesdays, the noonday prayers, the, the Wednesday nights, Bible studies, join in. Our Bible studies have been off the hook. Our prayers have been off the hook. You need, that's how you stay connected. Okay. The different groups, we know the youth still uh, get together. Um, so we're going to have the different ministries are going to be still meeting through zoom because we don't know how long. And so when we don't have a time, we're not giving you say this specific date. Uh, but we're going to be meeting, um, as a committee of board to still talk about it, getting information. So we need to have the wisdom. So we need you to pray for us. Okay. So, cause we're all in this together. So please stay connected, do a wellness check. All right. So how many of you are going to agree? I'm going to do a wellness check. If it's once a month, check in with somebody, text somebody, call somebody. All right. And say, how you doing? Just thinking about you. Ain't got to be long and or whatever. Okay. We're in this together. Some people are going through, some parents are going through some parents. I, I even um, was talking with um, some of our district folks in, in uh, the churches this week and saying, man, you know, what are, what are parents going to do with some of their children for the summer? You know, like, it'd be great if, you know, we've got educators in our churches, our different churches. It'd be great maybe if we could come together and, and come up with something to do, you know, um, for two days during the summer where through, through uh, Zoom, through whatever these Google Hangouts or whatever that, that, you know, for our young people, because, you know, some, you know, even though some camps are opening, some parents don't feel comfortable sending their kids to parents uh, to, to camp and, and some, you know, whatever, there's a whole lot of stuff. What can we do together? So we need to stay connected. All right. So please um, pray for us. Uh, join in, come on these, you know, be here on Sunday mornings to host watch parties. Um, we got to get together and do another chat night. So we know how you're doing. Uh, we keep saying we're going to do a game night. We've got to find time to do that. We need to do this. All right. So do some wellness checks folks and check on each other. Um, somebody wrote, I love wellness check idea. Good. You know, cause usually sometimes when people check on somebody, something has happened. Let's do it before something happens. All right. So that's the, that's the sense of direction I wanted to give you as far as KEC, as far as our reopening, so that you know that we're not reopening yet, but we want to stay connected with each other. We do love and we miss every one of you. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for being a part. We thank you for sharing the, the messages and the words on Sunday. They go near and far. Some you do, um, don't even know that. Um, and, and just to share that because of these broadcasts, um, I did a funeral for somebody I never met. I did a, a, a Zoom funeral uh, for somebody I never met, but met me through online and said, you know, you've been her pastor. Can you do her funeral? Uh, lived in another state. Um, and so we, we did it. And uh, I was like, I felt on it to do that. Um, and so this is, what, this is what this is about nowadays, folks. So um, where the word is going out. And so we want you to, you know, host the watch parties, let people know we're here so that people can be blessed and encouraged and be empowered. All right. So we love you. We thank you for spending this time with us today. I know we went a little longer than usual, um, but be blessed. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the sunshine. We'll be back Tuesday morning on our regular hotline, Tuesday morning, hotline, 6 a.m. and Wednesday, noonday, uh, prayer. We'll be back here on this Zoom line. We love you. Peace out. God bless you. Um, God bless you. Thanks for being with us today. Let us know where you're, as you say goodbye, let us know where you're, you're, where you watched from today. Love you all. Love you too, Shamika. Let us know where you watch from today.